What are my two favorite chest exercises that I believe just about everybody should be doing in some shape or form in their workouts? Today, I'll be sharing that with you. You see, even if you don't care about chest development, which is a huge mistake that I see women making a lot more than men with their training due to having boobs, be it real or fake, covering most of their chest region, or they're kind of worried that training their chest will shrink their boobs, which simply isn't the case, as that's more of a factor of body fat levels. You see, even if you don't care about chest, I still believe it is extremely important to be training it in some meaningful way. Because training a muscle is not just about increasing its size or improving its looks. Training a muscle is about taking a muscle, all of your muscles, through as much of a contractile range as possible under some kind of meaningful stimulus. This is important from a movement capacity perspective and overall, I guess, joint health perspective. And I find that so many people, when they neglect training a muscle entirely or don't use a complete range of motion when training the muscle, that's where they start to limit their overall capacity with their movement long term. And that's where down the road, they may start to encounter a lot of issues and maybe even injuries. So if you do care about your chest development, you should definitely look to add in these two movements. And if you don't care about your chest development, but you do care about overall strength and quality of movement, you should still look to add in these two movements as they are extremely efficient movements, in my opinion, to be adding into your regime. So today I'll be sharing those exercises with you and giving you some of my key technique tips and reasons why I think just about everybody should be doing them. Now, before we get there, I'd like to hear from you guys. What are your favorite two exercises for chest? I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to drop me a comment below and let me know whilst I take a sip on my tea. Also, please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Those little actions on your part go a very long way to helping this channel grow, which means I can create even more regular free content just like this for you. Okay, so exercise number one is a low incline dumbbell press. There's a few things going on here that make me prefer these over any other type of pressing. Because chances are, if you're currently training chess, you're probably incorporating a press of some sort. Whether it's a flat press with a barbell or a decline press with dumbbell press of some sort, or maybe even a dip, which could be considered a pressing movement too. So why do I like the low incline dumbbell press so much? Firstly, I believe that dumbbells are better over barbells because of the freedom that it creates at the grip, wrist and elbow. It allows you to naturally customize the grips to your personal structure. One thing you may not realize is that the human body is not designed symmetrically, despite what may be shown in anatomy textbooks. We will all have a natural variation in structure side to side, and this is something that a fixed straight bar doesn't really accommodate for. Instead of customizing the exercise to your structure, we're forced to try and customize our structure to the exercise when using a barbell. Which, when you're dealing with a fixed thing like your skeletal structure, is pretty hard to do. The result of this inability for us to create as much of a perfect fit as possible when using barbells is that it can lead to the accumulation of a lot of unnecessary wear and tear on the joints such as the elbows and shoulders. Even if you work on improving your mobility, there is only so much in it, can, it can improve and it's still never going to be enough to be comparable to what you can achieve by simply switching to dumbbells that allow for more freedom at the joints. The second reason why I like the low incline dumbbell press over say a flat press is the relative position it places your shoulder joint into while still allowing for proper alignment of the muscle fibers of the chest. So if you're lying on a flat bench, your shoulder joint is in a certain degree of rotation, which is not inherently bad or dangerous at all, 
But if you were to put yourself up onto a slight incline, it allows you to take your arm into a degree of relative external rotation, which tends to provide a lot more comfort, stability, and usually strength as well with pressing, whilst also allowing your chest fibers to remain active through the entire movement. Now, again, the flat press angle is not bad whatsoever, but I do find that many people who experience issues with shoulder discomfort or pain, or who struggle with creating a significant mind-to-muscle connection to their chest when training, they tend to feel a lot better overall when going to a slight incline over a flat press. Now, how much of an incline should you be using? It really is a personal thing. I like anywhere between 15 to 30 degrees, and I personally usually bias a 30 degree incline more than anything else, but it really does come down to your relative sternal angle, your rib cage size, and your preference towards arching your back. The larger your rib cage, the larger your sternal angle, and the larger your arch, the higher the incline will be, generally speaking. But really, don't overthink it. Just try anywhere between that rough range and see what feels best for you in terms of comfort and whatever allows you to get the best personal engagement in your chest as possible. So, what is exercise number two? The push-up, the humble push-up, a movement that most people have probably neglected since they ever first started training in a gym. I remember many, many, many years ago, when I first ever started doing any sort of structured exercise, I would do hundreds of push-ups a day in my bedroom. I remember probably back around 2005 or six or whenever it was that YouTube first came out, I discovered eight minute abs. So my morning routine would be doing eight minute abs. Then I would do five sets of 50 push-ups. Eventually, I got a five pound dumbbell. So I'd sit there in my room reading Calvin and Hobbes comic books and I'd be doing these guys for hours on end. Then I started learning about actual lifting and started going to the gym. And soon after I replaced push-ups with other weighted pressing movements. But now I find myself coming back full circle where in the last few years I have reintroduced push-ups and found them to be extremely important, beneficial and underrated from a chest development and movement capacity perspective. Now, the first thing you're going to find is that one of the biggest limiters to push-ups is not being able to load up with enough weight to create any sort of real challenge to your muscles, unless if you're you know, just starting out with training. This is where I like to use bands to create more resistance. When using bands, I've found the most comfortable way to use them is to loop them into a figure eight and to put it across your back and to slot your elbows through the loops to keep it fixated across your back the entire time as you're doing push-ups. Now, when you're performing the banded push-up, a couple of really cool things happen. As you complete the push-up and reach that lockout position, the band tension increases, increasing the resistance your muscles have to overcome. Now, this is the complete opposite to the dumbbell press, where as you reach that lockout position, the resistance your muscles have to overcome decreases, and it becomes easy to reach that lockout. And this would mean less stimulation on your muscles in that all-important lockout position. The push-up reverses this, where the bottom is easy, relatively speaking, and the resistance gets exponentially harder as the bands get stretched out, allowing you to stimulate your chest in that shortened position. Now, the other reason why I like push-ups so much, and banded push-ups in particular, is that as the band tension increases in that lockout, it forces you to create a degree of protraction or rounding through the upper back, which is often seen as a bad thing. Now, there is a difference between, say, a gymnastic-style push-up, where you intentionally try to create as much rounding or protraction at the top to achieve a full hollow body position, and a push-up for chest stimulation, um, which doesn't require as much protraction. But the big reason I like push-ups is because of the freedom it creates for your shoulder blades to move where they want to as you perform the movement. Now, this is something that I think a lot of people make a lot of mistakes on, including myself over the years. And that's that they keep their shoulder blades fixated back and down the entire time when doing any sort of chest work. Especially when your shoulder blades are fixated on a bench, it's very easy to keep them shoved back and down into the bench as you go through your presses. 
Now, this is a cue that came from power lifters to decrease the range of motion and to decrease the amount of work required to lift the heaviest weight possible. But it doesn't actually translate to better stimulation of the chest muscles. And at worst, it creates a disturbance to natural human mechanics and can create a lot of issues in shoulder movement capacity down the road. The push-up is one of the things that helps to overcome that because going into greater degrees of protraction doesn't just allow you to train the chest more effectively, but it allows you to train a muscle called the serratus anterior, which is so important for shoulder and shoulder blade mechanics. The last thing to keep in mind with push-ups is that you will find that the first thing to fail most of the time will probably be your core if you do them first thing in the workout. And you'll have the tendency to drop your hips and lose a good position for chest stimulation well before your chest tires out. So I recommend putting them later in your workout when you have already generated a bit more fatigue to the chest. Perhaps incorporating the low incline dumbbell press first and then maybe the push-ups second. So there you have it guys, my favorite two exercises for chest. Give them a shot, let me know how you go with them. And if you have any questions, please do drop them below and I'll see you all next time.